Hello everyone and welcome to this new Construct 3 tutorial where I will show you how to create a drum computer in Construct 3. Um, so let's get cracking. Here are like eight tracks and each of those tracks has got a sample assigned to it, a kick sample, a snare sample, uh, a hi-hat sample and stuff like that. And then there's uh, 16 buttons on each track. I've uh, made a little color for each of them individually. Um, and you can activate them like that. And whenever you press the play button, you can see that it plays that sample. So I've activated the system audio in this recording so you can listen along with me. So let's make some kind of beat here. Like that. But I think it's pretty slow. So what we can do is we can turn this knob here. This is the beats per minute knob. And you can see a little LED light flashing on here every time uh, we get to a bar and we can increase that like that so something like that that's too busy let's do that Okay, and then whenever we feel that a certain track has to be muted, we can press the mute button. It doesn't play anymore, and then if we feel this snare, for example, is too loud, we can decrease the, the loudness, the volume of it a bit, and you can see that the number of LEDs decrease uh, while we are uh, uh, diminuing or increasing the volume here. You see, so let's see how this works actually. Well, this is the main layout of the game, and in this main layout, you can see that uh, there are the number of tracks. If we click this track here, you'll see that uh, every um, background of the track here has got, of course, a track ID, so we can identify this one, um, and it's also got the name of a sample. And that name of a sample is, let me increase this, is the name of such a sound patch as we've imported them here. Uh, of course, you're free to import more than one sound patch bank. Uh, you can do whatever you want. Um, so these sprites here are beat uh, trigger sprites. You can see that each beat trigger sprite has a track ID, has a trigger. ID and has a notation if it is active or not. So what we're seeing here actually is um, so the track ID denotes which track it's on so that is vertically but the trigger ID is the horizontal uh, indication. So there are 15 triggers uh, from ranging from 0 to uh, 16 triggers rather, ranging from 0 to 15. Um, only if the B trigger is active will it play a sound when the game is running. So here we also got this mute buttons which has also got a track ID and a muted indication and these buttons here uh, taking care of the volume also have a volume and a track ID. Basically that's about it. It. It's not too very difficult. How do you get? How do we get the different colors here? Well, that's just simple. There are different animations. See, uh, we've all set them here to a different animation. The initial animation here is two. Initial animation here is three, and etc. etc. So that's about it. Let me see now how the uh, code works. So we've got a separate. Uh, event sheet for a number of variables here um, and there's a technical layout which I've added uh, a free uh, how should we call it color palette which I used to uh, create the color scheme for the little uh, buttons um, let me close this one up too 
um, so how's it work? We've got some uh, groups in the code to make everything more beautiful. Um, so let's ignore this one for a moment. Uh, we'll come back to that in a minute. So on start of layout, the beat triggers are initialized. You can see here the animation is stopped, the effects are disabled, and the opacity is set to 50. So also the play button is initialized, as well as the patch setting containing the muting and the volume. I'll come back to that, actually. Um, this uh, template also provides uh, a little bit of functionality to be able to save all these settings to a file, for example, so you can load it afterwards from local storage. However, it does not include yet the local storage interface, but it can be done because all of, all of these things are loaded, uh, are saved into a JSON format, actually. And that's what we're seeing here when we click the button. We have also a hidden uh, text input here. We can check what it contains just for debugging reasons, actually. So here we initialize the patch and we come back to that in the patch functions in just a minute. So that's actually what happens on the start of layout, not too, too big of a an issue. And then we've got some playback functions. So the play next beat, what happens actually is there is a, tri a timer that's going uh, all the time. Um, and whenever a beat is played, it calculates what the BPM is, the beats per minute, and depending on that beats per minute, it will uh, fire a timer which is longer or shorter depending on how fast the next beat will have to trigger. Every time that beat triggers, um, this um, uh, function is called play next beat, um, which then shows which um, uh, which beat trigger sprite to highlight, uh, and this will be a horizontal bar of beat beat trigger uh, sprites, of course, denoting uh, the, the the progress of of the beats. And also the time signature, the LED light at the top right, will also be changed. So what we're doing here, uh, if we are playing, this is a little uh, variable denoting, okay, one means we're playing actually, and zero means we're not playing. Um, and then we've got, we're going to disable all of the lighting effects and all of the vertical glowing effects. And these are actually effects which are present here on the... Um, on the beat trigger sprite, which can be enabled and disabled. And what we'll do is we'll just go and search uh, for those uh, beat trigger sprites for the current trigger. So there's a, a current trigger of variable, which we're setting here while playing, uh, that every time we play a beat, the next trigger uh, is increased, uh, unless we need the maximum trigger, which is 15 in this case, and then we go back to zero. That's what it does here. So well, we're selecting all of these and then we will uh, do a for each loop and um, go and lighten them. And if it is active, we play that track depending on the track ID. So that means that these ones will be set glowing and we will check, uh, check each one of those. And um, every time we see that it is active, we will play the patch. That's it. That's what it does, actually. And then also uh, make the LED at the top right flash according to the beat when hitting the first beat trigger of the time signature. So in this case, 0, 4, 8, and 12. Enabling the effect, uh, wait a little moment, and then disable the effect. So whenever um, we hit this bar, or this bar, or this bar, or this bar, we will uh, light this effect, and we will... Um, uh, and light it again. So that's what what happens again. Um, and then after that, we just start the new beat timer. So we do that this way. We could as well set a timer to go uh, with a regular uh, interval, of course. But at that time, um, we would not be able to change the BPM uh, while we're running the tracks. So now if we start running, we can change the BPM while we're running. And that can only happen if we actually uh, do that using a beat timer, which is an only once uh, timer, which we uh, fire time and time again. So this play 
track function actually what it does it just checks the JSON file in which all of the settings are stored um, and then if it's not muted of course then we uh, play the track which is in the JSON file at the volume which is in the JSON file um, that's basically it um, very very simple function here uh, that's just because everything is saved into that JSON file and then we have the patch functions, which save to that JSON file, of course. Uh, so this template supports saving the settings of the drum computer to a JSON file, even though the support to different patches, uh, saving the different patches to disk is not supported in this template. So it's possible to extend these patch functions to do so, of course. Um, the save patch function will just loop through the beat triggers and save uh, the fact if it's active or not into a JSON file. So there's a two-dimensional array for every track and every trigger. Uh, next to that, the muting and the volumes will also be saved. So for each of these beach, beach triggers, we will set uh, the track ID, trigger ID to active, yes or no. And then we set the muting, we set the volume of the mute buttons and the volume buttons. Very simple. So whenever the game starts, or uh, the initialized patch will be called it's, it resets the JSON file, saves the name of the samples in the, in the JSON file as well, based on the track background sprites. And you can change this logic to make it more dynamic, let the users set up tracks and with different sounds and stuff like that. So, pretty simple. So this is the beat timer, start beat timer. The only thing it does is it stops the beat timer if it were to be running. And it starts it again for 60 divided by the DPM divided by the time signature. So uh, this template only supports time signature based on four beats and not on a three base, for example. You can change this, uh, but you will have to also change the number of patches here and the layout of the number of patches if you want to do so. So the only thing that happens uh, on timer is you play the next beat. And that's it. So the patch interaction, that's all of the, the buttons and the, the click uh, stuff will sure happen. Um, so when clicking this play button, and we're not already playing, we can check that here, reset the flag, and we start the beat timer, and else we reset the flag. It's very simple. We can also change the animation here, because the play button is also an animation, which is a play and a pause. That's basically it. Then when left clicking on a beat trigger sprite, if it's not active, we set it active. And we set its opacity 100%. If it's active, we deactivate it. And we set the opacity back to 50. And um, we set the animation to active or not. So that's what we do. And then on left click of the mute, very simple, mute yes or no. Um, and then uh, we set the opacity. Um, and we also call save patch, of course, so it's saved into the JSON settings. And once it's saved into the JSON settings, the, uh, the play track will be able to, uh, uh, the play track function rather, will be able to pick that up and will be able to see if it's muted, yes or no. So the functions below here uh, keep track of turning the knobs, both of the individual tracks and the BPM knob. That happens by just setting a starting Y variable here. And while the mouse button is down, and we adjust the volume or the BPM according to the current Y mouse button. So while we're dragging up or down, uh, we're just checking the relative position of the current Y mouse position to the starting Y position. And that means an increasing the BPM or decreasing the BPM or similarly increasing or decreasing the volume of the different tracks. So um, we keep track of which knob we are turning by the G-selected track uh, here um, on the volume knob and or adjusting BPM flag on where uh, adjusting the BPM we set that here and so while the mouse button is down we adjust the volume controls here um, and you can see that here that based on the selected track of course we will set the volume of that function which is a, a parameter to uh, the volume knob plus uh, the G start Y minus the mouse Y, but we round that a bit. We divide it by four, not to have too much sensitivity, of course, and uh, of the of the dialing knob, 
and we clamp it to between minus 20 and plus 20 that's better same thing that happens here for the bpm we also clamp that and we also just add the starting y minus the mouse y divided by four um that's about it very uh, simple logic for the interaction as well so the volume controls um the only thing that does here is we pick the correct volume knob uh, depending on the track ID and we set the angle of the volume knob depending on the volume which we're setting and we're just setting that volume here in the patch interaction you'll see that here adjust volume controls that's what we do here and uh, we set the, the volume here and then there's these little LED lights surrounding the volume knob and uh, you'll see that each of these LED lights is very small has a volume minus five uh, 10 etc etc and we just select the correct ones for that individual track where the volume is smaller or equal than the volume we're taking in as a parameter and for those one we set the opacity to 100 and for all of the rest we set the opacity to 30 that's what we do and of course we save the patch so the play track um, function will take that volume into account when playing that um, here we can take that into account when playing the sample uh, this individual sample is taken and uh, this is the tag of course what we're tracking it with so that's it a very uh, simple uh, template which you can of course expand to your liking uh, you could for example make different patches uh, save and load patches make a different um, drum kits and stuff like that it's assign uh, other uh, make an assignment uh, logic to assign different uh, drum kits to different tracks and stuff like that um, so that's it i hope you liked it um, as always please like please subscribe and see you next time and by the way i will leave a link to uh, in the description to the uh, template on the server store where you can get this template See you next time.